What's going on, Golf Addicts? DB here to talk about everything you need to know and nothing you don't about TPC Summerlin, the host site for the Shriners Hospitals Open. Uh, it's a regular event we see in Las Vegas, Nevada every year. This is a great event for the PJ Tour. A lot of money goes to the Shriners Hospital, helping out a lot of kids. It's a great event, and I'm going to give you what you need to know and what you don't if you're going to bet on it or play any sort of DFS or gaming or anything. All right, let's get started. I'm I'm going to get I'm going to get into some really good stuff. You're going to want to stick around, uh, including some quotes from a few past champions that will free us up to potentially pick anyone. I mean anyone. Okay. Uh, first of all, like in recent history, what we've seen at TPC Summerlin is a lot of, we've seen some first timers, guys like Smiley Kaufman have won here for the first time. Uh, RIP to Smiley. He's doing his thing on the broadcasting side. Good for him. We've seen a lot of long shots. I mean, Smiley was a bomb. Rod freaking Pampling. We were doing podcasts when Rob, Rod Pampling, or whatever his name is, I think it's Rod, won this event back in 2016. He won at 300 to 1. Just a couple years ago in 2020, Martin Laird won at 225 to 1. Uh, you know, there's been some short numbers too. Sung J M at 30 to 1. Bryson DeChambeau won here in 2018 at 14 to 1. Patrick Cantlay at 20 to 1. The Patrick Cantlay year in 2017, it got rather windy. That's really the main defense of this golf course. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But as you can see, it's kind of all over the board. Long shots, big bombs, massive bombs, first timers, Corn Ferry Tour graduates that are now rookies, old farts, you know, that you're going to hear a lot about the guys that have Las Vegas connections, like a Kevin Na, like a Martin Laird, guys that went to UNLV, guys that practice out of here. You got Butch Harmon that teaches out of Las Vegas. It, it's all kind of stuff that you're going to hear this week, um, and, and we're going to get down to it. I'm going to give you the key stats that I think are most important. We've got a few player quotes that I'm going to read off, including the one from a past champion that I think will free us up a lot. Um, and I'm going to talk about course hacks and course horses that you're going to need to pay attention to. And let's get into the features of this golf course. Um, and a few things that I think we should keep in mind. Most recent winners of this event have played a fall event leading up to the Shriners. Now, sometimes this can can you know change in where it falls on the schedule, but a lot of past champions have already had already teed it up in the current PGA Tour season. Now, Bryson DeChambeau is one that didn't. I think the last time he played before he won here in 2018 was the Tour Championship, so he just had like three weeks off, four weeks off maybe at the most. Um, but you can see that this is typically won by guys who have already started and you know uh, they've already started their fall season kind of shaking the rust off maybe at a previous event also since 2010 okay there have been 20 guys who have finished at the first round leader or tied for the first round leader and this is key if you're playing dfs showdown or betting on first round leaders which i do not advise you to do but of those 20 players since 2010 15 of them have come from the AM wave, five from the PM wave. Why is that? Well, I think ten, the, the wind tends to pick up a little bit more in the afternoon, and obviously in the morning we know golf courses are softer, the greens are more receptive, and this is a very high green and regulation percentage kind of golf course. So keep that in mind for DFS showdown. Keep that in mind for first-round leader bets. Course experience does seem to be a little more critical here at TPC Summerlin, but like I said, the Corn Ferry Tour newcomers can play well. Um, all right, let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to look over a few things here. Starting off at the scorecard. And just basics of the scorecard here. You see par 71, 7,255 yards is uh, TPC Summerlin. You can see a lot of short par 4s. There are nine par 4s at 450 yards or less. Uh, and actually, even these par 5s, which one of them can, can tip out at over 600 yards, all these par fives are fairly gettable by just about everyone in the field. One of the reasons why this course plays so even shorter than the yardage is it is at elevation. You do have the dry air. The ball just travels, uh, you know, a little bit further. These guys are going to get more distance with every club in the bag. Uh, but you can see there's not really much to it. This is a typical TPC course set up for birdies and birdies in bunches. All right. Course features. Let's look at course features. It, like I said, it plays at elevation. Par fives are gettable. The par fours, blah, blah, blah. Water is in play on about four holes. Not that big a deal. And ab about 102 bunkers all got a renovation in 2018. A lot of them 
just simply being brought back into play with the catching up with modern distance. The main defense of this course is if the wind picks up and the greens get firmer. That's really it. Uh, and it is a little tougher to scramble around these greens with the Bermuda rough and bunkering, but that really only matters in difficult scoring conditions like we saw in 2017. They are bent grass greens. They're pretty large at like 7,400 square feet on average, and they're fairly flat. So this is this is not a tough not a tough situation. Uh, Bermuda Bermuda in the fairways, Bermuda in the rough, and bent grass greens. Now, before I move on, I do want to ask you to comment something real quick. Your favorite gambling game in a casino, because that's something that comes up every single week here, or every single year we get to Vegas is, all right, who's partying? You know, who's the young college kid that's got a hankering to throw some dice or maybe have a stripper, you know, maybe do a little a blow or something. We don't know. DJ's not here anymore. So I, I don't know. He might not be, he might not be showing the young kids the ropes, but there's always this, this narrative about who, who do we need to look out for? You know, that, that's going, that's going to get Vegas, you know, um, Bangkok has him now. All right. Um, but you know, I want to know what's your favorite casino game. I used to, I used to strictly play poker. That's all I played. I've literally never pulled a slot machine in my life. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world, but I used to just sit there and play cash game poker for hours, eat and drink for free, go to the bathroom every now and then scroll my phone, entertain myself, hopefully make some money. That's my favorite. Um, but then I discovered craps and I am addicted to craps. Thank God I don't live in a, in a state where there's a casino nearby or I would lose all my money. What's your favorite gambling game? Drop it in. And if you're a craps person, you know, are you a pass line, no pass line? What are you playing? Uh, are you not playing the, any, either one? Um, hopefully you're not playing the junk in the middle. Let's not do that. Let's be better than that. All right, let's keep going. Key stats and trends to know. Data Golf. We get a lot of this from Data Golf. Ranks TPC Summerlin as one of the more course history dependent courses on the PGA Tour. Uh, regular rotations in, in terms of courses that we've played a lot since 2015. It's similar to Torrey Pine South, TPC Deer Run, and Quail Hollow. So, you know, TPC Summerlin, it, it matters to understand and know the golf course a little bit. We see guys talk about having an edge, being familiar with Summerlin, especially the way these greens, you know, roll and uh, and kind of where to leave yourself on the side, you know, which side of the green. Summerlin falls in the top 10 easiest courses on the PGA Tour in tw since 2015. That kind of fluctuates a little bit year by year, but historically one of the easier courses on the regular PGA Tour rotation, excluding the majors, well, actually including the majors. Summerlin has one of the highest average driving distance numbers at 298 yards and ranks about average for fairway hit percentage at 64.2. The fairways are wider than tour average at just over 34 yards, and a higher percentage of shots at TPC Summerlin fall in the 100 to 150 yard range than average on the PGA Tour. A lot to dissect here, and I want to talk about it for just a second. The driving distance number is an, is a large part due to the elevation that we talked about. Um, you know, and and average in terms of fairway hit with slightly wider fairways. I mean, I think this is one of those events where. As long as you're on the proper side of the of the fairway in terms of attack angle, being in this Bermuda rough isn't the worst thing. I mean, it is Bermuda rough, so you can definitely, you know, you can definitely catch flyers. You can have problems uh, getting it close enough in this birdie fest to to really, you know, go low and score. But, you know, we've all, we've seen plenty of short hitters just do fine. Their ball's going to get a little more a little more distance out of it. They're still going to have a ton of wedges. That that 100 to 150 yard range um, there's a lot more percentage of those shots that get hit here at TPC Summerlin, and that's for everyone. So everyone's got wedge in hand. It really comes down to hitting it close, making a lot of putts. It's going to come, you know, it's really going to come down to who's making putts. That's why a guy like Rod Pamplin can win this thing. Um, the average green and regulation percentage, pretty high, is 74.6% at TPC Summerlin. It's been it's been top five to 10, really easiest on the PJ Tour every year since 2015 for green and reg percentage. It is one of the more difficult, though, in terms of around the green if you're missing the greens and reg or if it does become uh, difficult. So if we're looking at the forecast and the, the, the wind is up and the conditions might be nasty, that's when you obviously are going to, you know, at every every tournament, you're going to start to wait around the green play and scrambling a little bit more. But if not, forget it. You better hit a bunch of greens here, a bunch of greens in reg, and then make your putts. So um, everybody's going to be hitting a ton of greens in reg. All right? Let's keep moving. Let's look at some player quotes. All right? Martin Laird, past champion, he says, quote, Yeah, I feel like it's definitely a course that's some local knowledge. You know the greens are tricky sometimes with the way they break. 
I know I kind of know where to hit it around here and know the holes that you have to play a little more conservative and those you have to play more aggressive. I'm really happy. I hit the ball nicely. I got the ball in the fairway a lot, which is what you have to do around here. If you get it in the fairway, you can be aggressive. All right, we're going to notice a theme here. Kevin Na, another past champion, Las Vegas resident. Uh, on the live, but he says, yes, it's a great golf course for me. I think you have a, I think you have to really drive the ball well and keep it in the fairway so you can control the spin. I know the rough's not deep, and but because of these greens and some of the hole locations, you have to hit the fairway to be able to spin the ball. You don't have to bomb it out here. Anybody can win here. All right, let's look at one more quote from that guy, Rod Pampling. He says, quote, no, this is a good golf course for the shorter hitters. Would it be nice to hit it long? Absolutely, but you don't need to. You know, it's just a good course for that. You don't have to be the bomber to do it all. I was playing with Brooks today. He hits it a long way, but he was hitting a lot of irons off the tee. So it's still a positional golf course, and that's what you need to do is position yourself properly and give yourself chances. That really frees us up. I mean, it frees us up. It frees us up to play almost any type of player, especially in terms of DFS. If you're building lineups, you're building maybe based on skill sets, bombers, uh, short knockers that putt it really well, or just great putters. Who cares if they hit it long or they hit it short, or great iron players, or great wedge players. It doesn't matter. Like It's really going to free us up. You don't have to be married to a bomber or one type of player, and that may allow you to pivot off of more popular players that may fall in a certain category where everybody's talking it up. So uh, you know, in terms of DFS, I think it, it it frees you up to be a little more contrarian in spots and to pivot if there's a certain player that everybody's just, you know, goo goo over. OK, um, before I move on to some key stats, some course horses and some track hacks, you're going to want to watch this. I do want to let you know that uh, we've got an opportunity. OK, a tremendous opportunity. How would you like a side hustle? that many have turned into something that brings in more income than their regular full-time job. And you can do it from wherever you want, from home, whenever, or your, you know, your own office somewhere else. Our longtime friend in Augusta, Georgia, started Smart Scalpers and Elite Events nearly 20 years ago, and he's begun training and franchising individuals all over the country to buy and sell tickets with sophisticated and intelligent software. It's all over the internet. Nothing face-to-face, -face, okay? Nothing. You can get concerts, sporting events, festivals, more, any kind of ticket. And all you have to, and all you, you can do all this from home. Smart scalpers will onboard you. They will train you weekly and give you full-time access to their support staff whenever you need it and access to that sophisticated software. There are no strings attached. You can sell as little or as much as you like, buy and sell as little or as much as you like. You can quit at any time. And if you're interested, all you have to do is do this. I'll show you. I'll put it on the screen. All you have to do is text seven zero. Text the number 706-755-5974. And tell them the tour junkies sent you. That's text 706 755 5974. Tell them you want to learn more about smart scalpers and that the tour junkies sent you. There's no pressure, okay? There's nothing wrong with learning a little bit more. You're not committed to anything by texting the number. They're not going to hit you with a bunch of freaking, you know, spam texts and phone calls all the time. That's not how they work. Give it a shot. Text 706 755 5974. Tell them the tour junkies sent you and see what's up. All right, let's wrap this thing up with some key stats and some course horses and track hacks. Key stats, strokes and approach as always. Good drives gained. I like that on Fantasy National. It's not just fairways gained, but it's good drives gained. How many times do they hit the fairway or just miss it but still got the ball on the green and regulation because green and regulation percentage is huge here, okay? Uh, Long-term wedge proximity. I mentioned that 100 to 150-yard bucket. That means a lot of wedges in hand. I only want to look at long term. If I'm gonna, if you're gonna force me to look at proximity, I'm only gonna look at long term, and I'm probably gonna look at a rolling report on Fantasy National. That's how I would do it. If you don't have a Fantasy National membership, FantasyNational.com/tj for twenty percent off that membership is how you get it. There are proprietary stats, including these three that I'm about to mention, that are only found on Fantasy National. That's good drives gained. Uh, the rolling reports of long-term wedge, proximity, or any other stat. And then this next one, opportunities gained. How many times are guys hitting it inside of 15 feet uh, in regulation or under regulation, giving themselves a real birdie or eagle opportunity? I, I want to know that. Birdie or betters gained. 
DraftKings points gained, all those scoring stats. I want all that in there. Strokes gained putting, short-term and long-term. Just who's hot with the putter now? Who's one of the best putters in the field? Who are the best putters in the field? And I also want to look at strokes gained bent grass putting. These are bent grass greens. They're pretty pure. Who's comfortable on bent? But I don't think you limit yourself to just bent. Just good putters in general. Recent form and course history, as always, come into play for these courses. And we'll fine-tune just how much of that. Uh, towards the end of the week. Course horses. This is minimum 12 rounds versus strokes gain expectation. That's key. Okay. DB, uh, Matt Naismith doesn't have the most strokes gained here. Okay. This is versus his expectation. This is per data golf. Okay. So this really helps you mine some guys who could be sleepers. Matt Naismith, Sung J.M., Patrick Cantlay, Bo Hostler, Adam Schink, uh, Austin Cook, Adam Hadwin, Patton Kazire, Martin Laird, Robert Streb, Sung Kang, and JJ Spawn are those course horses that do better here versus expectation in a minimum of 12 rounds. I want a decent sample size here at TPC Summerlin. Minimum 12 rounds. Finally, who are the track hacks? Same thing. Minimum 12 rounds versus their expectation. Doesn't mean they can't do well here. They could. But just typically over their 12 round minimum at TPC Summerlin, these guys have gained less strokes than they should have based on their profile, based on the other courses they've done well at before. And those track hacks are Ryan Armour, Kevin Chappell, Bronson Burgoon, Danny Lee, Max Homa, Rory Sabatini, Patrick Rogers, Jim Herman, Shez Reevy, Henrik Norlander, Chris Kirk, and CT Pan. Those are your track hacks. Listen, we got it all in here in just over 15, 16 minutes. Everything you need to know, nothing you don't. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not already. Hit the like button. Drop the comment, your favorite casino game. I would appreciate that if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Leave a five-star review. Write something nice. That would be helpful. And look, let's have a great week. May your screens be green and bend over your bookie. See ya!